This was the scene Singaporeans woke up to at the height of the haze crisis in June this year, when PSI levels hit a record high of 400. The crisis prompted leaders of the region to push for more effective measures of haze management. These included the sharing of concession maps among governments, which indicate where the fires occur and on which companies land. Singapore's Environment and Water Resources Ministry is going beyond just monitoring. Early next year, I'll be going to Parliament to introduce a new uh, act specifically targeting transboundary haze. We will make it a criminal offence. We will hold the companies as well as the directors liable for the damage that they cause to us as well as the deleterious health impact on our population. We will take uh, views on public, adjust it if necessary, and I hope to pass this bill uh, sometime within the first half of next year. Another concern for Singaporeans, the rising number of dengue cases, which broke the 10,000 cases mark in June. As of December 27th, the number of dengue cases had exceeded 22,000, with seven reported deaths. The National Environment Agency stepped up checks in homes and public places, with about 4 million checks conducted as of November. Dengue inspectors found 18,000 breeding sites. Most of these were in homes, but breeding in construction sites took centre stage when news of a dengue cluster in Orchard Road broke sometime in October. Whilst I would say it is too early to say that the epidemic is over, I think the worst is over. So we're now down to about 350 cases or thereabouts. I think the number will stay around that. 2013 has also been significant on the climate change front. Now in Singapore, intense rainfall over short periods of time continued to cause flash floods in many areas. And experts have warned of more such weather patterns in the future. Now the current monsoon season alone could see an average increase of about 20% in total rainfall. And while the National Water Agency, PUB, has embarked on a series of projects to improve and upgrade drainage, observers say there is room to include a wider section of society to play a part in mitigating floods. The PUB has implemented new rules including a requirement for on-site stormwater management strategies for building projects over a certain land size. Experts suggest incentivizing developers, architects and engineers who have come up with creative flood management methods. One of the very practical uh, solution, uh, incentive measure to encourage developer to uh, put into consideration in uh, reducing runoff is to uh, either lower their development fee, development cost, or increase their usable uh, plot ratio. So all this can be translated into uh, you know, uh, the, the, the monetary gain at a later state. Dr. Balakrishnan says a review of the Sustainable Singapore Blueprint will begin in 2014 and will involve public consultation. The blueprint maps out the country's strategy for economic growth in an environmentally sustainable way.